Hi everyone. Today we'll talk about engineering the tools of, the, of uh, scientific discovery, uh, space exploration, with my friend Emma and my friend Tech. First thing, the introduction. Engineers uh, working with uh, scientists. Actually, the uh, this topic is challenge because uh, now. Um, the world is dependent on uh, in engineering more than before. Uh, uh, actually, the, the engineers forced to be partner with um, scientists to understand the, that many unanswered question uh, of nature. Uh, actually, these two descriptions uh, have distinct rules. The rule of science is to explore, experiment, and uh, uh, dis discover and uh, on the other hand uh, 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 the role of engineers is to creating uh, buildings and uh, design engineering uh, participate in the, sci in the scientific process of discovery engineers are needed when uh, scientists uh, con when scientists conduct uh, body imaging and the brain uh, uh, in addition uh, scient uh, scientists will need uh, the intervention of uh, engineers. Uh, for instance, the development of a new uh, ma of a new microscopes, uh, also uh, the new mathematical computing uh, methods. Engineers uh, exploration of uh, of the universe. Engineers uh, engineers expertise will be critical overcoming overcoming obstacle such as the danger of radiation, uh, the, the need to supply sustainable, sustainable source of food and oxygen and water. Now with my friend Emma. Um, I'm going to explain why this, uh, what makes this a grand challenge. So space, space exploration is a vital area of study because we do not yet know very much about it. Because of this elusive nature, it offers a seemingly infinite realm of learning opportunities for engineers and scientists. Um, uncovering the secrets of the universe involves a need to overcome many obstacles in many areas of engineering. Some of these obstacles come from, uh, for example, the need, uh, sorry, uh, finding ways to endure a long distance human space flight. This presents a demand for uh, making improvements, like Tariq said, and supplying sustainable resources like food, oxygen, and water. Other ways we improve our understanding of space is from observation from here on Earth with telescopes. We rely on their feedback. There's a need to improve the ones we have as well as, well as um, making new ones. We could also benefit greatly from making new technology all together to aid us in investigating things that we don't really have a grasp on yet, like uh, dark matter, for example. Uh, and each of these three examples alone it will involve the work from many different kinds of engineers, uh, chemists, physicists, uh, probably a lot more. Uh, this work uh, will involve making developments in what we already know about science and then finding new ways to apply it. Uh, it's kind of like a cycle. Every time we learn something new, make a new discovery, uh, it offers information for more research. So next I'm going to talk about the societal impact. So another reason space exploration is important is because what we learn through it often has some way of being applied to Earth uh, to uh, benefit life substantially. There are many examples of this. One way is how ultra-sensitive radar technology was later repurposed to be able to detect vital signs in uh, for natural catastrophes, like uh, if someone was trapped under rubble, it would be able to detect that they were there. Uh, there are many other examples of this that are uh, listed here. And that all was just developed in a mere uh, 50 years, so it's actually pretty incredible to imagine uh, what else will happen. It also helps us have a better understanding of how we fit into the world. It's not just about the science. Next, I'm going to talk about the history of the challenge. It's really hard to narrow it down because so many achievements have been made. 
It all started in 1957 when the Soviet Union successfully, successfully launched uh, Sputnik 1, which uh, is pictured right there. So it's kind of like this uh, beacon pole. Uh, this was considered a scientific marvel, though, and it really helped emphasize uh, science and education. Uh, then the first human would orbit the Earth in 1961, and the real game changer happened in 1969 when Neil Armstrong walked on uh, the moon. Just skip down. Uh, in 1973, uh, the US launched its first space station, the Skylab, which uh, in a matter of a year contributed to, uh, they carried out like 200, I think, over 200 uh, investigations that uh, helped expand the fields of physics, astronomy, and uh, biological sciences. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and... Okay, thank you, Emma. Uh, current state of practice and uh, the conversation. Uh, currently, uh, engineering the tool of discovery has brought uh, a great knowledge to humanity. Uh, recent discoveries are specific or defined. Uh, take a shorter time other than before to discover. Uh, also, humanity problems ha have been reduced. Uh, because the biologists have come up with a new, uh, have come up with a new tools of uh, discovery uh, uh, that will that will uh, accelerate the inventation, productivity, and discovery. Uh, also, that will bring uh, flexibility, lower cost of ac of accessing medical care, uh, and integrate the new technology. The National uh, Academy of Engineering. Uh, has de has developed an interest uh, in defining a challenge associated with engineering uh, significant discovery. Uh, uh, also meet uh, national needs, encourage edu educational research and acknowledge the prior achievement of engineers. Now with my friend. Thank you. So I'm gonna go quickly towards uh, our future plans. Uh, and the first and foremost, uh, uh, to our nearest planet, Mars. Mars is very suitable for us uh, because uh, uh, it can be said that it is uh, quite near to us. That's a, a picture of Mars. And it has quite a favorable environment and uh, several agencies are currently working on sustaining life over there. Another one is going to be Titan. This green planet has an atmosphere of nitrogen and which is uh, quite similar to that of uh, Earth and it can potentially sustain some life forms. Another one is going to be the um, Encel, uh, Enceladus, and this is the moon of Saturn as well. Furthermore, it, uh, you can see the white layer over here. This is of mainly ice, and there's deep level of ocean beneath this. And this is going to be the brief uh, future timeline of uh, our plans. First and foremost, the Bigelow air, uh, air space, air space sorry, uh, which is going to be the first space hotel, and which uh, will be launched in about 2020s. Uh, moving forward, Mars, um, uh, Mars will be launched by NASA, which will be explore, uh, exploring its evolutionary history. Uh, in addition to that, India will launch its uh, first manned mission, and China will come up with uh, its first space station. In about 2024, SpaceX will launch its um, Mars cargo, and which will contain several equipments uh, to sustain life in Mars. And then comes 2026 where SpaceX will finally launch its manned mission to Mars and finally we, can, we might be able to see human in the red planet. Moving forward, NASA will uh, then manage uh, studying asteroid, man will be sent to asteroid and mining will occur over there. We will be looking for several minerals over there. And if uh, by any chances SpaceX fails in uh, 2026, then NASA will also launch its uh, manned mission to Mars in 2030s. And we, that will just increase the rate of our success. In addition to that, China and Russia will be uh, launching their manned mission to moon, and uh, then comes the Breakthrough Star Shot mission, which will be launched in 2036. And this is going to be the one where spacecraft will be sent to Proxima Centurius. And currently, scientists believe that several alien lives are sustained over there, and we will uh, just come to know what's the truth and what's the myth, and that will be clear by this. So that was it, that was uh, our presentation, and these are our sources and references. Thank, Thank you. you.